Hey guys, so in today's video I'll be sharing with you what's on my laptop, all of the apps and Chrome extensions that I use, ways that I've customized my laptop, and also all of the accessories that I use with it. If you want to skip to a specific part of the video, timestamps as well as links to everything I mention are down below in the description box, so check it out if you're interested. And we've got a lot to cover today, so let's just get straight into it. Firstly, let's talk about some basic info and all of my accessories. So the MacBook that I have is the 15 inch MacBook Pro. And the reason I got the Pro instead of the Air and didn't save my money is because I knew that I wanted to run some pretty heavy applications on here that the Air probably wouldn't be able to handle well. I always use a laptop stand so I can get the screen up to my eye level and prevent neck pains. And the one that I have offers three different positions. It's magnetic so it snaps to my laptop whenever I'm not using it. It doesn't take up any extra space or add weight to my laptop and it's also always with me so it's everything I could ask for in a laptop stand. I have a keyboard cover to protect the keys and I tried to pick the thinnest and the most transparent one but as you can see it still adds this like grayish type of look to the keys but it gets the job done so I'm fine with it. Every now and then I use a mouse with my laptop whenever I'm working on graphic design, animation, or uh, video editing projects because it's so much easier to control those kinds of apps with a mouse rather than the trackpad and I obviously want to get my work done as fast as possible. Unfortunately, I also have to use one of these USB hubs to connect literally anything to my laptop because the only thing the MacBook accepts is USB-C. Recently, I also got a camera cover for my laptop because I was sick of using washi tape again and again and it would like leave marks and it just looked ugly so I just bought a camera cover instead. And the last accessory that I have is this laptop bag. I don't have a case on my laptop, so whenever I carry around, I always put it in this bag so I don't damage it. I can carry around in my backpack or just separately because it has a handle. It's super protective, it has little pocket for all of the accessories, and it's also water resistant, so if I get caught in the rain, my MacBook will still be safe. And I also really, really love the pink and marble design. I think it's the cutest thing ever. Next up, let's talk about my setup and all of the customization for my laptop. I have a couple of different desktops on my laptop and each one of them has a different background because I get bored of wallpapers pretty easily. As expected, all of them have pastel colors, so if you guys like any of them, um, I link them down below so you guys can get them and download them for yourself. I also have hot corners set up on my laptop, so if I move my mouse to a specific corner, it'll do whatever is assigned to that corner. So for the upper left corner, it puts my display to sleep, and then for the bottom left corner, it starts the screensaver. Speaking of which, the one that I have is the most basic screensaver that literally everybody else has. When it comes to appearance, I'm a very huge fan of dark mode and the app that I use to control all of it is Night Owl. So Night Owl allows you to quickly switch between light and dark mode and you can also have a specific schedule if you'd like. But the reason I use it is to exclude specific apps from dark mode. So for example, the calendar app looks really hideous and ugly in dark mode and I just can't stand it, but I don't wanna stop using dark mode just because of it. So in Night Owl, you just select the calendar calendar app and force light mode on this app specifically while the rest of the computer runs dark mode. And the last thing that I've done to customize my laptop is by adding the dock to my touch bar. And I've done this using an application called POC. So what POC allows you to do is basically move your apps from your dock to your touch bar. And there are a lot of different options and different things that you can add or disable. So you'll just have to play around with the settings yourself. But what's super cool about this is that I can hide my actual dock and then use my touch bar as a dock, which means that I'll have more screen space it's super responsive and works really well and also it's pretty unique and looks aesthetic because not a lot of people use this and know about this and the best part is that you can easily switch between the standard touch bar and the customized touch bar by just clicking the control button twice 
Now let's move on to the apps that I use on my laptop. So first I want to start off with the apps on the dock. And the first thing I have here is Google Chrome, which is my browser of choice. And I mostly love using this because of all the extensions that it comes with, because I can really customize it and the extensions are just super useful. I have a separate section on Google extensions in today's video, so stay tuned for that. Next up, I have Final Cut Pro X, and this is where I edit all of my videos, and this is what I'm using right now to edit this video. I totally love the interface. It's minimalistic, but it allows you to get so much done and there are many different features. I have Things 3 and this is my digital to-do list. This is where I just look at my to-do list and tasks every day, schedule tasks for the future and also manage projects and different things. I love all of the features that it has. It has more features than I could ever need and I also really love the interface because it's super simple and easy to use. After that, I have Visual Studio Code, and this is my code editor of choice. I'm studying web development, so I need to write code a lot, and this is where I do it. I also have Notion here. If you guys don't know, I'm a huge fan of Notion, and this is where I plan and organize my pretty much my entire life. Hopefully, I'll do a Notion tour soon and show you guys all of my different workspaces. After that, I have Xmind Zen, and this is where I make all of my mind maps. I'm a visual learner, so I love making mind maps, and this app allows me to customize my mind maps as much as I like. There are so many different themes, and you can change every single thing and detail about your mind map, so it's really great. The rest of the apps on my dock are super basic, like the calendar app or the app store, so there's not much to talk about. And that brings me to the next section of this video where I'll share some other useful apps I love. And the first one is Clean My Mac X, which is one of those must have apps if you're a Mac user. I've been using this to keep my desktop computer and now this laptop safe and clean for a few years now. So I'm so excited to tell you that I'm working with them on this video. Firstly, the app allows you to quickly find and delete junk files, which can help you free up quite a bit of space and of course, make your laptop faster. It'll also scan for viruses and malware to keep your Mac safe safe and help you get better performance by eliminating unused apps. My favorite feature is Space Lens. It scans all your files and shows you what the biggest folders are so you know exactly what files to delete to quickly free up some storage or declutter your Mac. You can also quickly uninstall any application or update it to the latest version. This might sound random but I really love the interface of the app and all the animations because they make it super satisfying to use, at least for me. But anyway, if you're interested you can download it for free and try it out yourself. I'll have all the links down below in the description box. And if you end up using it, let me know in the comments if you love the app design as much as I do because I'm really curious. The next app I have is called One Switch, and as the name suggests, it allows you to control quite a few things with just one switch. So it's a menu bar application, and here you can quickly play and pause your music, connect with your favorite pair of headphones, you can turn on dark mode, night shift, keep your computer awake if you're downloading a big file, or turn on do not disturb mode. You can quickly hide and show your desktop icons, and then also this um, function where you can uh, turn on cleaning mode, and this will keep your desktop and your keyboard locked and you can also assign keyboard shortcuts to these if you use these often to make things a bit quicker. Next up is an app called Paste, and this is a clipboard manager, so whenever you copy something, Paste remembers that, so you can later paste it wherever you want. Paste remembers not only just text, but also images, files, and pretty much anything that you copy, and it's super useful when doing research because you can copy everything you need in one batch and then paste it whenever you need it later, even a few days later, and it's super convenient. All you need to do to paste is just double tap. You can also save the things that you paste a lot and pin them. For example, here's my color palette. I use this a lot, so I have it pinned. There's also a search bar, so if you copy a lot of different things, you can quickly search and find it with the search function instead of manually going back and finding it. And it's just one of those super useful apps that make your life easier.
And the last app I want to mention in this category is called Alfred 4, and this is kind of like the search function on your Mac, but like a million times better. So here you can quickly Google things, you can also search for things not only on Google, but also on YouTube, on Gmail, on Google Drive, on Amazon, and all you have to do is just type the name of the app, like Gmail, and then search for whatever you want to search for, and it'll automatically open up your browser and do the searching for you, which is super convenient. You can also do calculations in real time here. And of course, you can open and find apps and also files. And you can also control your computer, like shut it down or send it to sleep. It's so much faster to do it with your keyboard rather than a mouse. So I use this app literally a million times a day. I also wanted to give you guys a quick overview of all the other apps that I use. So firstly, I have quite a few Adobe apps that I use for creativity. And then I have three Microsoft apps, Word, PowerPoint, and OneNote. And you can see what I use them for on the screen. Next up, I have this app called Touch VPN. And this is a completely free VPN app that allows me to connect to many different servers in other countries. So it's useful to have. I also have this app called PDF Element. And this is where I edit and annotate all of my PDF documents for school and for other projects. So here you can add sticky notes, highlight, underline, and edit the text. And the interface is pretty minimal too, so it's nice to use. I have this app called Kiki, which helps me practice my typing skills so I can type faster. And iTube Studio, that is a video downloader in case I wanna download something off of the internet. Lastly, I have WhatsApp, Zoom, and Slack, which are just communication apps that I use during online school. Moving on to the last category in today's video, which are my favorite Chrome extensions. The first one I wanna share with you is called Workona, and this basically allows you to create different workspaces, and in each workspace you have your own set of tabs, so when you switch workspaces, tabs automatically switch as well. Inside workspaces, you can make bookmarks under different categories, so you can quickly open different pages or websites that are related to that workspace. For example, in my Everyday Things workspace, I have both of my email accounts uh, bookmarked so I can quickly open them every day and check my email. Workona is also a new tab extension, so every time you open a new tab, you can see all of your workspaces, and there's also a search bar in the middle so you can quickly Google anything or access your most used websites. And also, you get a very beautiful wallpaper every day, um, and you can also switch them if you don't like it, so it's super aesthetically pleasing as well, and I absolutely love it. Another extension I use quite a lot is called Podcastle. So whenever there's a big article, research paper, or something on the internet that I need to read, instead of sitting there and reading it myself, I'll just convert it to a podcast slash an audiobook using this extension and then just listen to it instead. So what I love about this extension specifically is that it just sounds the most human-like out of every other text-to-speech tool that I've tried, which is why I love using it so much. And it also offers offers a lot more control so you can quickly pause and play, skip to any specific part, you can change the speed which is really nice and also choose between male and female voices and if you want to you can even download the audio file and listen to it later. And all of this is absolutely free which is so nice because I can use it pretty much every day when I'm multitasking and save myself so much time. Another extension I use pretty much on a daily basis is Picture in Picture. Um, I'm pretty sure that now you don't even have to download the extension itself because it's now built into Chrome with a recent Google Chrome update. So whenever there's a video that I'm watching on YouTube or on any other website, I go up to this little um, music looking icon and then I just click the Picture in Picture icon and that basically turns the video um, into a small window that stays on your screen no matter what kind of app you're using. So you don't have to be specifically in Google Chrome, it'll still stay on your screen and you can kind of multitask and use other apps while watching your video. You can also change the window size, move it around and play or pause the video. And it's just convenient whenever I'm doing boring things so I can kind of watch a video in the background and make it a little more entertaining. So yeah, not the most productive thing, but super useful. 
Next on the list we have Grammarly and I'm sure most of you guys know already what this is but whenever I'm typing fast I always make a lot of different random mistakes and it's so nice that Grammarly catches them so I'm sure that I'm not sending out emails with mistakes in them and also if you double click on any word Grammarly will suggest uh, different synonyms for the word which is really useful because you don't want to use the same word five times in your essay so that's really great as well and it just catches many mistakes that I sometimes wouldn't be able to catch myself. Another extension I probably won't be able to live without is LastPass because this is where I store all of my passwords. So whenever I want to log into any website, it just automatically fills in the password for me so I don't have to remember every password for every site. And it's so nice because it's secure and I'm just, I never really have to reset my passwords or anything like that. Moving on, next I have Application Launcher for Google Drive. So I personally store pretty much all of my files in Google Drive and so I use this extension to open all of my files that are in Google Drive with apps that are located on my computer. For example, I can edit documents with Microsoft Word or edit images with Adobe Photoshop without having to download the file first and then open it in Photoshop. It just automatically does this for me and just saves a few clicks so it makes things a bit more convenient. Before we wrap up today's video, question of the day, let me know in the comments down below what's the date when you're watching this video. So it's Tuesday today and I'm pretty sure that it's the 29th of September as I'm recording this. If you enjoyed today's video and you haven't subscribed yet, make sure to subscribe down below and turn on your notifications and feel free to comment any video ideas that you want to see in the future. Thank you so much for watching till the very end of the video. Make sure to have a wonderful day and I'll see you super soon in my next video. Bye!